Somebody wanted to do an article uh, a few months back for one of the Sunday colour supplements about the people in the entertainment business who have gone back to the land and sort of, you know, done something there in, you know, commercial terms. And they, they started off with me, and I said, fine, OK, I'll do it. Who else have you got in mind? They said, well, we're rather hoping you might be able to tell us because, uh, you know, who the other people are. And I said, well, I can't think of any. I mean, there's Roger Daughtry supposedly has a trout farm. There's some guy from Duran Duran who's obviously, uh, you know, uh, temporarily lost his, his, uh, his head and decided to go to Sirencester College of Agriculture and, and bought a 400-acre farm in Gloucestershire. And Must have been mad, actually. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's going to, if he's very lucky, you know, make something in the order of about 20,000 a year out of doing that. And um, if you've been in Duran Duran, 20 grand isn't going to pay the... Uh, you know, the haircuts, let alone the, the clothes bill, is it? Very true. <laughs> if you'd have been talking, for instance, about 20 years ago, possibly uh, th this could have been the case. I mean, you could have made a very, very lucrative li living out of farming, which brings me on to the brand new album, um, Christopher Knave. Mm -hmm. uh, the second track, uh, Farm on the Freeway, which basically the way I read the song is about how uh, modern technology and modern life has carved up the farmland and... Uh, made it into industrial, uh, or used it for industrial purposes. Well, yeah, it's a song really set more in the American environment rather than the UK one, where the American farmers are under, I think, even more pressure than we are in the UK or in Europe. Um, but it is really the, about the situation where farming is just an absolute break-even way of life, if you're good at it. And at the end of it, the land is worth not what it's worth as agricultural value or in terms of income-producing... Uh, you know, real estate, what it's worth is something to build a motorway through or a, an industrial estate on or an airport on. I mean, that's the reality in which we live. We're now looking at the reality where farming land on, you know, marginal, you know, bottom end of grade three or into grade four land is really completely unviable in farming terms and is likely, ultimately, to become sort of uh, meadow land with, uh, you know, covered in grass and wildflowers for people to, to sort of tramp about and have picnics in and leave their litter in, which is at the sad state of what has been a lot of... Uh, Britain's agricultural producing land since the war. Because you remember, and we're going on here about farming, which nobody really wants to hear, but since we've, you know, I've, I've started, so I'll continue. <laughs> um, start over ten. That's right. Um, I mean, since the war, or during the war, Britain's farmers were, were encouraged greatly by the government to, to plough up everything, you know, plough up the lot, even all the, the, the meadow land, the, the grass land, the sheep producing land, so on, plough, if it could be ploughed up, if it was nine inches of soil, plough it up and grow cereals to feed Britain through the war. And after the war, the encouragement continued. Britain became far more mechanised in its farming. The farmer actually was encouraged all the way down the line to produce, 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 and he became very efficient at it. I mean, the farming industry became one of the most efficient producing industries in the United Kingdom, all the way through the, the troubles and turmoils of the 60s and 70s. And then suddenly, suddenly everyone seemed to wake up, literally two or three years ago, to the fact we were actually in Europe as a whole. And in fact, when, then when you include the, the American production as well, Part of the Western world was overproducing cereals. I mean, wheat and barley, along with butter and sugar and other things, into this ridiculous sort of excess. And then suddenly the farmers became the bad guys. You know, there were all these sort of industrial people making lots of money, raping the land and producing something that nobody needed, which isn't really the case at all. But I would accept as a very realistic case now for people who don't need to be farmers shouldn't be doing it. And that, in the agricultural sense, I would say might, a might apply to me. The only thing is that I care rather a lot about the land, and I rather worry that if it's not being at least perhaps less intensively farmed, if it's not being farmed at all, it will finally end up being land which just does revert into something which I don't think gives uh, any kind of respect ultimately for the British countryside, because I don't think you can turn it into a national park for people to sort of tramp about in, because people do abuse it. I mean, we see it all the time, and it's it would take... Uh, a great change of, of people's ideas about the countryside before I think uh, land could be usefully and politely turned over to, to people to, to sort of consider as amenity land. However, what I do in farming mainly is in fish farming, and that's a whole different ball game because that's a new industry, and that's something that takes place in a part of the world traditionally very high un in unemployment, because although I only employ at the moment about 50 people, um, in farming and fish processing. I mean, we're, we're expanding so quickly. I mean, that'll be 100, 120 people in a year and a half from now. And I do it unashamedly, even to those people who think, why are you messing around with this fish farm instead of playing music? But for me, the two things go very, 
very much hand in hand than is a, a British taxpayer having made the, the momentous decision in 1973 to pay my tax in the UK and do something with the money other than stash it in the bank or spend it on the quiet. I mean, I've tried to turn it into something that at least is a bit, I think, is a bit more responsible in, in, uh, in terms of capitalism, which is the system we live in. And if that, that's the system we've got, then that's a system we have to try and make work. And I, I'm trying to do my bit.